I've gotten a request for this topic, so let's talk about how to bail a handstand on an apparatus. So I'll review the floor technique briefly, but I have a video on that already that I'll put a link to below. But we can see behind me I have several different handstand apparatus that are pretty common, and we'll talk about how to safely bail on all of those. Now before starting this, I do recommend already having a handstand on the floor, being able to bail on the floor, ideally already being able to at least balance a handstand on the floor before getting too far into these apparatus because the bailout can be a lot more dangerous potentially if you lose control or if you lose your awareness of where you are upside down. So let's just review briefly the floor technique and then we'll get into the difference and the modification of how to bail on apparatus. So on the floor, I have my handstand, I can fall this way, quite simple to fall if you lose control, right? Sideways, when I'm teaching this, it's not really a fall, it can be, but usually if you go sideways, it means that you intentionally went sideways, but we are going to actually talk about sideways bails on the apparatus. And then the main one that's important is when you fall forward. So as I fall forward, I continue to look at the floor, I turn, I step with the hand, it essentially becomes a modified cartwheel. Now one other way to do that, that I typically don't teach, but it is very helpful, is to turn the body without stepping the hand. So it looks something like this. It's almost like you lift one hand and then turn around it, but the theory and the principle is the same. I'll do it one more time. I never look away from the floor. So throughout the whole movement, even if I land a little bit low, I can see the floor the whole time. So especially in the apparatus, and I've talked about this before, one of the worst things you can do is this, where you look away from the floor, and then if you're actually falling and you lose sight of where you are, the fall can be a lot more disastrous. So let's talk about the blocks first, because they're gonna be the lowest to the ground compared to everything else. So I kick out for my regular handstand, whatever that may be, and then whoop, I bail. So one option is to step the hand. Uh, because the blocks are almost level with the floor, stepping the hand's not gonna make a big deal. Um, let's do that again. Whoop. Or also because the blocks are higher from the floor and I have more clearance, it might be worth just turning and kicking the leg down. But essentially the bail here, it's going to be very similar to the floor. Um, I don't have to worry about landing on the blocks because I'm going to travel a little bit forward and I don't take up a lot of space. So, and sometimes right on that one the blocks turned a little bit. Not a big deal. This one is really not going to be too much different on the floor. I think um, the main thing to look out for when you're kicking, it's kind of a tangent, is to make sure you don't slide the blocks forward, right? It's to make sure that before you kick or before you jump, you're already putting the weight down into the blocks so they don't move, they don't go anywhere. And then look, and then when you fall, turn in the shoulders, see the floor time, yeah, see the floor the whole time, kick the leg down. Not too bad, not too much different. All right, so next we have the one-piece parallettes. Now these are a little bit higher compared to the blocks, right? So in this case, you won't really be able to step the hand to the floor. These are also bigger and longer, which means depending on where you are on the apparatus, you might fall back onto it, which is also not a good thing. So the first basic bail, so in this case, I'm not stepping the hand. Now maybe if these parallettes were longer, I could step it into a pirouette, but I don't have the space for that and it's not the intention. So as I fall forward, I feel that I lose control. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm lifting up one hand, allowing my hips to rotate around the other hand. And then when I'm turning face the floor, fall, I can land back on my feet. Now this is a forward fall. so. This may not work as well if they were full parallel bars, for example, because then I would be landing potentially on the bars. So the other thing you should start to be aware of, of doing, depending on what kind of apparatus it is, is to go a little bit to the side. Is to actually, when you're falling, you kind of push yourself off to the side, and that way you can get out of the apparatus, because if you're really out of control, then to land on this wooden metal thing, might hurt. So that's a, an important detail. The issue with the falling to the side is again, you have to be aware of your handstand. You have to actually anticipate a little bit sooner the loss of control. We have one, and then we have 
two. But the two was a bit more controlled, right? Because I had to send myself into a different direction. But again, it's good to know that because you're gonna have different kind of apparatus and they're all gonna behave a bit differently. I have different kind of parallettes, uh, a bit taller than the previous ones. So now especially, right, if I wanted to step the hand onto the floor, that would be a huge impact on the wrist. So that stepping of the hand that we do on the floor is now completely not an option. But otherwise, it's gonna be the same idea as before. We go up, we fall. The, um, yeah, it's the same idea. Go up, we fall. Oh, take it to the side just in case if they were full length. We don't want to fall forward because that could be a sketchy landing. But yeah, same idea. Rotate around the hand. Uh, it's again, you're gonna have a favorite side that you prefer to go to, and you should be able to do both sides. But the reality is, when you're actually falling, you have to react very quickly. But one more time. And notice the landing now because of the apparatus. I'm also not completely squared off. It's a little bit sideways. Don't worry about it too much. The important thing is that you clear the apparatus and then you stay safe. And then finally the handstand canes. So they vary in height of course and I have canes that are similar height to the parallels I used. But these are a bit more than my knee so maybe up to the middle of my leg. A bit taller, right? So now stepping is completely not an option. Um, I can land on this wooden thing if I want to, but generally I still want to clear the apparatus. So, the same idea as before, when you know that you're falling forward, you continue looking at the floor, and in this case it's going to be that same idea of lifting one hand and then turning on the other. So, whoa, fall, and I'm even rotating the hand in this one, right? Because I kind of let the weight of the hand go just to make it easier to fall forward, but I'll show you a few more times. You can, of course, you know, if you're doing one arms, you might end up bailing to the side, something like this. But that wasn't really a bail, that was a bit more controlled. I think it's this idea that when you're first learning it and it's a little bit scary to go forward, that you know what to do. Um, I'm repeating myself, but if you see the floor the whole time, that's the best favor you can do for yourself because then at least you know where you're falling. You can see where you're going to plant your feet. Again, the worst thing you can do, especially on an apparatus, especially when you don't have a basic control of your handstand yet, is to do this with your head and stop looking at the floor. That's later. You can do that all you want once you understand the basic control. But if you don't have that yet, please, for safety, continue looking at the floor. So, I'll show you a couple more times. Oh, I fall forward, I lose control, I fall, oh, I... Landing, of course, it's a little bit heavier. Why? Because we're now, you know, two feet higher than we were, so my hips are here, so I'm essentially landing from, you know, six feet up from my center of mass. Um, this one, so when I teach the floor bail, I usually say legs together is better because you can land softer, one, two. Here it's a bit more impact, so I think this is generally safer to land feet together so you know that you can get a solid landing out of it. Show you a couple more times. Up, fall, turn. So, important thing with the bails in general, you only have to learn it once, but it needs to be a reflex. You should be able to do it reflexively when you know that you lose control and you know that you need a safe way to get out of your handstand. So I balance, I balance, I fall. So I waited a little bit longer. I let myself fall longer, but it's the same idea. I never lost sight of the floor. And then as I fall, my body naturally, I let go of the hand. In this case, the right hand, but you may have a different preference. And as I fall, I naturally turn so I can face the floor and so I can land facing basically the way that I fell from. So I hope that was useful. Again, I've gotten a few requests for it. It's nothing new here, really. It's no new material. It's just a modification of that same basic bailing technique. And you can see also why that cartwheel becomes so important because it's that ability to turn your body and face the floor and maintain the same awareness throughout. So, um, for example, handstand roll, obviously it's not an option here. You can do a forward roll on the parallel bars, but it's a different kind of skill. Um, handstand to bridge, 
Again, also not really an option, so you have to do that modified cartwheel. And of course, I always recommend when you're trying a new apparatus, be safe first. Test it out, make sure it's solid, make sure that if you put weight on it at an angle, the whole thing doesn't collapse. Make sure it's not super wobbly before you commit to a handstand on it, because all of these bales also assume that the apparatus is steady enough to stay where it is, but if the apparatus tilts or collapses under you, you can't get away from it. You're basically falling onto it and you're falling. So again, safety, make sure whatever you're doing a handstand on is sturdy. Make sure that you know how to fall before going for any tricks, just so that the safe, once you can do that, the safety is not a concern. But if you can't do that yet, then there's always that risk that you might lose control and not have the ability to react like you should. So yeah, I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you wanna see anything else on this channel. Check out my handstand ebook, check out my Vimeo channel, check out my uh, upcoming workshops to learn some of these details in person and I'll do another YouTube video whenever, at some point.